Hi everyone, in my review of this SmartBro home Wi-Fi, I mentioned that we might be able to make this a portable unit because normally it has to be plugged into the wall using the AC adapter. Now right now I've got the adapter going through my power meter so we can measure how much power it actually consumes. So let's take a look at how much power it consumes when it's idle, there's no traffic going through this. And you can see it's around 2.8 watts, not a lot of power, but now let's try to put some traffic through it. I'll do a speed test. My phone is currently connected to this home Wi-Fi unit. So let me bring this closer to the camera so you can see the power usage. You can see it's already spiked. It went up to four or five watts there um, because when you're putting traffic through the unit, it will consume more power. So let's wait for it to find the server, start the test, and then we'll monitor the power usage. So you can see 4.6 watts it went up to. Let's see where it goes, six watts nearly seven watts I think so right now there you go you can see it, it's pretty high power usage I mean it's not that high but it's probably higher than a lot of people expected so we're seeing peaks of around six maybe seven watts maximum now remember that's just with one user connected as you add more users there's going to be more traffic going over the Wi-Fi which means higher power usage so whatever we use to power this has to be capable of at least six or seven watts if not more now the easiest way to make this portable would be to use one of these portable jump start packs that are designed for cars because most of these have a DC output so this one can output 12 volts 16 volts or 19 volts plus it can jump start a car they normally come with a lead like this so I've set it to 12 volts I plug in the cable connect it to the home Wi-Fi and you can see it will turn on and it will actually work perfectly because this DC output I think is capable of around 60 watts or something like that so it's going to have no problem supplying the 6, 7, 8 watts that this requires so that's the easiest way to do it where you're guaranteed it's going to work perfectly but of course not everyone wants to carry around something like this and not everyone has one of these portable jump start kits now if you don't have one of these I'd recommend you buy one anyway aside from the fact that they can jump start a car they're basically just a really big USB power bank so you can see there's even a USB port here but the most important thing is this DC output and you can power Wi-Fi routers DSL modems fiber modems like so many things from this regulated DC output so it's a great backup just in case you ever have a power outage anyway so I'm connected to the home Wi-Fi again let's do a speed test now we're not actually interested in the speed that's not the purpose of this the reason why we're doing speed tests is it puts a lot of traffic through the home Wi-Fi very quickly so it puts it under a heavy load which means it draws a lot of power so we're only doing this to see if the router reboots itself or if it loses its connection or something like that because that's what would happen if it had power power issues but as you can see here it's completely stable and that's to be expected because like I said this little power bank here can output I think something like 60 watts on this port so it has no problem powering this home Wi-Fi unit now the next option is to buy or make a 5 volt to DC adapter cable this doesn't have any kind of voltage regulator or voltage booster it's really just converting the 5 volts into a DC barrel jack and it's very simple to do all we do is buy one of these little adapters which are pretty common at hardware stores and places like that even online we get a USB cable we snip off the end and then we wire the power cables into it very very simple now this can have some stability issues this is a regular USB power bank let's connect it to the home Wi-Fi now you might be thinking well this is 12 volt input we're only putting in five won't that break it well no going under voltage won't break it going over voltage might um, but what might happen is that under voltage can lead to stability issues so that's why I actually made the cable as short as possible because we want to avoid any voltage loss so it's booting up now once it fully boots we'll do a speed test so the home Wi-Fi is now fully booted I'm using the evolution home Wi-Fi app you can see it shows me it's connected I can see the signal level um, so let's go ahead and do a speed test so far so good but let's see if it stays stable because what I found is that when you run it from a USB power bank if you put too much traffic through it it can cause it to reboot but so far it actually seems to be okay of course it also depends on your power bank you want one which can output at least 2 amp now another option is to buy or make a 5 volt USB to 12 volt 
cable. Now I made this myself, obviously you can see it's DIY, but you can buy these on eBay, Amazon, Lazada and places like that. The only thing you have to be careful about is whether they output enough power because we need at least seven watts, if not a little bit more. And some of them are only rated for like three watts or four watts. So you have to make sure it's capable of supplying enough power. So let's plug this into the power bank and connect it to the home Wi-Fi. And we'll wait for this to fully boot and then connect my cell phone. So begin test. And you can see we're not getting very good speeds, although thankfully the router hasn't rebooted itself. Okay, well, no, actually it has rebooted itself. Um, now, one of the things I was warning you about is to make sure your adapter can actually provide enough power. And this one cannot, basically. I think the maximum output of this is four or five watts. But I wanted to show you it because it can be done. You just have to make sure your little adapter is capable of providing enough power. So that was just a quick video showing you three ways to make this into a portable unit. The easiest and most reliable is to use one of these jump start power banks which has a 12 volt output. That will work absolutely the best and it's the simplest to set up. The next easiest way I guess is just a regular USB cable going into a DC jack. You saw that did work quite well. Now if you put it under heavy load for a long time it might reboot itself. It won't be super stable but for light to medium use it works okay. Now this solution with the voltage booster can actually be just as reliable as the jump start kit. The only thing is you have to make sure you buy one with a rating of at least 7 watts or higher otherwise you're going to run into problems. So if you have any questions put it in the comment section down below and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.